Illegal crossings at the U.S.-Mexico border fell to a three-year low last month. It's the lowest level under the Biden administration. Approximately 84,000 unauthorized migrants were processed in June, the fourth consecutive monthly drop. This is according to preliminary Customs and Border Protection data obtained by CBS News. It's a big shift from December's numbers, which saw nearly 250 thousand migrants processed at the southern border. The drop comes weeks after President Biden's executive action restricting asylum claims at the border. CBS News immigration and politics reporter Camilla Montoya Galvez joins us now from Tempe, Arizona. Camilo, can this decline in the crossings be credited to that executive action from the Biden administration or is it more complex than that? Well, John, that is certainly what U.S. officials and administration officials for that matter are arguing, they are pointing to this dramatic step that President Biden took a few weeks ago at the U.S.-Mexico border to ban most migrants who cross into the country illegally from being able to request and win asylum. And it is important to note, John, that there has been a sustained decrease in illegal border crossings over the past four months since March. But that drop has been more acute and pronounced over the past few weeks after President Biden issued that executive action. And so officials would point to the higher rate of that decrease for that attribution to that executive action that the president took at the border. The order, I am told, has significantly reduced, John, the number of migrants who are being released into the U.S. interior with court notices. That historically has been viewed by officials, Republican and Democrat alike, as a pull factor that attracts unauthorized migration. Because as you know, once someone is released, John, they typically are able to stay and live in the country and work here for years because of how backlogged the immigration system is regardless and irrespective of whether or not they actually have valid asylum claims and whether or not their claims will be prevailed and will prevail in court, rather. And so that is very important to note. I will have to underscore, John, however, that there are other factors, as always, at play here that drive migration or that reduce it. Those factors are weather patterns. Temperatures here in the southern U.S. are increasing rapidly, making the trek across the border even more dangerous and potentially deadly. And also, the Mexican government is still staging that aggressive mm. crackdown on U.S.-bound migrants, stopping many of them from reaching the U.S. in the first place. Camilla, let me grab onto that idea of the pull factor, because it's been debated for so long about immigration. And the idea is basically if you have harsh uh, immigration restrictions, word gets back to those who might think about making the trek, and that if it's harsh yes. enough, it will not pull them. It will, will push them away. Um, we've talked about this before. I, is there a feeling that, in fact, maybe that theory, which was once dismissed out of hand by certainly some liberals, that that theory has some weight? Perhaps, John, but it is still very early to draw any definitive conclusions, I think. It only has been about four weeks or three weeks since President Biden took this step. And obviously, I think most nonpartisan experts will tell you that migration is driven by both pull and push factor, the push factors being the conditions in countries like Venezuela, China, and other migrant-sending countries that are deteriorating politically and economically, but also the pull factors, not only the releases of migrants into the U.S., but also our labor market, John. That is a poor factor that most people don't talk about. The relatively stable health of the U.S. economy has been attracting many migrants who may not qualify for asylum, but are looking for jobs that are available here in the U.S. That also attracts migration. The administration would argue, John, that they are trying to take a balanced approach to this issue, yes, by deterring migrants to these harsher measures, including the sweeping executive action, but also by allowing them to come here legally if they qualify for these right. certain programs, including this smartphone app that allows people in Mexico to get an appointment to be processed in a legal and orderly way at official border crossings. That's, that's very helpful. Final, final question, Camilo. Um, the legal issue, the legal uh, issues facing this asylum order, what's the, what's the status of those and um, could this be overturned in the, in the near future? 
Well, John, it would not be a major immigration policy if it was not <laughs> being challenged in federal court. That has been the status quo over the past 20 years since Congress last updated the U.S. immigration system. Every major executive action on this issue by Republican and Democratic presidents alike have been challenged in federal court, and this is no exception. The ACLU and other migrant advocacy organizations are right now in federal court, John, asking a district court judge to strike down this executive action by President Biden saying that it violates U.S. asylum law and that it places migrants in harm's way. And I do have to say that while this case is pending and ongoing, John, the ACLU was successful in 2018 and 2019 in getting federal courts to strike down a very similar Trump administration regulation. Camila Montoya-Galvez in Arizona. Thank you, Camilo.